It has been a while, hasn't it? But I'm back and I'm in a new bathroom. You may uh, recognize most of the same things on the shelves in this bathroom that I had on my shelves in my last bathroom. It's been about a year, I think, since my last video here on YouTube and I've missed doing it. Um, but you know, life just gets busy and I had all these other things come up that's kept that have kept me away. But this pandemic has me back in front of my bathroom mirror talking to you, showcasing um, all of my favorite products from the world of green beauty. So uh, what's been really cool is over the last year, a lot of green beauty brands have gotten their hands on new formulas, uh, maybe even new formulators. I don't know, but now we have all these really great active ingredients that are keeping products on our faces in place longer. They are giving us more bold pigment. Um, it's really exciting. So I thought that it would be cool for me to do a, a, a comeback video um, showcasing one of the brands that has really seen me through my career. I've talked to you about them plenty, um, but they recently did a reformulation and a repackaging launch. Um, so do you know who I'm talking about yet? Vapor. Uh, I love this brand and I love the founders. They're both awesome, really thoughtful, dedicated women who um, really do their do an amazing job to get texture and color and longevity right. And they've got some new launches, lipstick, I mean, so many new things that are really exciting. So if you knew Vapor before and loved them, you might miss some of their um, their products, but you'll definitely come to love these. So let's get started. Um, their brand new um, illuminating primer. So I'm gonna start with this. Okay, so in full disclosure, you know, as a makeup artist, I have never wanted to talk about a product unless I've tried it on a variety of skin tones and types. But because this has been a pandemic that has forced me to not leave my house and my boyfriend doesn't have any interest in trying on these products, it's just my face that has uh, been able to be my test market. So um, what I can say about this one, because um, I've tried a few of the other products on others prior to the lockdown, um, but this one has only been on my own face and I love it. And I don't think that it's whitening, although I thought that it would be at first uh, first using it. Oh, it feels so nice. It makes your skin feel like absolute silk. Um, and it feels the way that a lot of the silicone based products feel, although there is no silicone in this, uh, it feels so good. The reason that a primer helps is because it, um, ooh, I'm gonna do, a, a little Instagram thing on this, but it's, if you think about an orange skin and you know it has teeny little dimples in it, um, and then you spread something over those dimples, you don't really see those teeny little uh, pores on our face so much. But if you have enlarged pores on your nose or here or wherever, you will notice a difference because this will make um, foundation glide on top and just sit on top of that barrier that has been created and, um, and look more smooth. So, even just alone, I've been wearing this alone and I really like how it just kind of blurs my face a bit, um, but underneath foundation, mm -hmm. And so if you know me, you know that I generally start with eyes first, but today I'm gonna to show you, because I really am just so into this product, I wanna show you how it looks on a naked face because I think I look pretty, um, pretty blank without any eye makeup on. And so all you'll notice are my imperfections. Um, I don't, even, I don't use that word, are my uh, sunspots and um, little veins and everything and, and scars from acne. Um, okay, so I take my foundation brush from Vapor. I love this brush. A little bit, I mean, that's hardly anything of their liquid foundation. And then this is the new sponge from Jenny Patinkin. So it's really cool because I took a break from doing this and now there's all these new products to play with and show you. Um, Jenny Patinkin, makes a lot of brushes that are great, but then she made these sponges. And um, you know the, whole, the drill, you hold this under running water for a second, you do this to let the water absorb, and then you squeeze it out and I wring it in a towel. So then before it was this size, now it's nice and um, spongy, gushy feeling. Okay, watch these disappear. This is pretty amazing. Let me grab a little mirror so I can see up close. Okay, so again, it's not, there's not much on this brush, but look at that. 
I don't like my skin to look masky. Um, if I have something to cover up, like on my cheeks, uh, I like it to be sheer. I don't mind a little bit of my own um, sunspot and veininess showing through. I just want to make it mostly even. And I really like this product around the eyes too. I often have redness around my eyes, which makes it look like I'm, I'm irritated or uh, didn't get enough sleep or something, but it's just my natural skin uh, coloring. Whoops. I don't usually put much foundation on my nose. Um, I like to leave most, as much skin naked as possible so that when we're seeing each other in natural lighting, I look just as good as I do on uh, Instagram or on one of these because it's there's such a marked difference between makeup for Instagram, which has filters to blur out all of the cakiness um, and an incorrect um, color non-matching that happens. I, I just, I feel like that's so not real life. So when you're watching a lot of those tutorials, it's fun, it's escapism. And boy, oh boy, some of those artists are incredible and really can uh, like redraw a face on your, your face or on their own face to create this like incredible look. But for me, what's really been important as I've gotten older is that I look good in all lighting under all circumstances and that I don't spend a ton of time in front of the mirror. So what I'm doing right now is far more than I normally do. Uh, normally I'm in and out of the mirror within five minutes and probably four of those minutes are spent on my eyelashes. So this, I just wanted to make sure you got a full full understanding of how great this foundation is and you saw how little I put on. I would say I put maybe two drops on. Um, again, let me show you how small, I'll just wipe this off. It was this one drop, maybe two drops. That much, and I would say I still had, see, some of it left over on my hand, which I then just wipe off. So um, all of that said, it's it truly is one of my very favorite foundations ever. I love it. It doesn't need, I don't ever use a setting powder, but they do have one and I'm gonna show you. It's what I was using this compact of. Um, it's a really, really finely micronized sheer powder. So if I was gonna use it, I would only put a little bit of powder. Like if you are if you tend to produce quite a bit of your own sebum. Oh, can you tell that I grabbed, a, uh, instead of a naked brush, I grabbed a brush that had a little bit of um, cheek color on it. Oops, let me just get rid of that pink that I just deposited in that area. Um, so I only ever put powder on the areas that are, that tend to produce the most sebum. So you know your face, you know, I usually get shiny on my forehead around noon or right here. This is, if I'm doing a red carpet, I generally put powder right here and right here. Even if the person is uh, really dry, it doesn't matter. That's the part that gives flashbacks. So if you're a makeup artist and you're doing stuff for red carpet, just know usually you need a powder a little bit right there. Um, but other than that, I almost never put powder on anyone um, unless they're super, super, ten they have the tendency to get greasy and oily. Okay, so because uh, part of what I was really excited about um, from Vapor's new launch focused around their lipsticks, um, the colors are great, but also it's the texture and the long wear about the, that makes these so special to me. Um, I love them. I've, I've worn them all. And for a little while I was wearing uh, bold before we were quarantined. I was wearing bold out in the public and people were always asking me about it. Um, especially people who were around me for a little while and they saw that it was still on. Um, but I think I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to try this color that I haven't yet tried, which is called blaze. I think I haven't tried this one. Let's see. Um, but they're all so good. All right, so for me, it's about applying this product to a lip that either is completely naked or has a teeny, teeny bit of either a tinted moisturizer or a very sheared out concealer. My lips are very asymmetrical. And unless I'm doing something um, that I know I'm gonna be photographed for, like I'm, why I'm getting myself dolled up right now is to go on a Zoom call with a bunch of other um, beauty industry people, five. So we'll be looking at each other, um, but I'm not, I'm not precious about making sure that my lipstick is, um, is correcting for my asymmetrical lips so much uh, in this moment. So so 
So that said, I'm basically just telling you, please forgive me and don't think less of me if I can't make my lips look symmetrical. They require quite a bit of focus on my part. Um, I've noticed as I've gotten older, as I know is true for so many of us, um, the asymmetry of our faces is uh, becomes much more pronounced. And as things, muscles and uh, every part underneath our skin begins to shift and change with gravity. Um, wow, I love that color. So I always list all the products that I use down below. So know that there will be all of these things listed with the names um, down below for you to check out on the page, um, either on the uh, Vapor site or Credo site where you can purchase them. Okay, so it's with the lip on, and I still, I always look at myself without eye makeup and I think I look so naked or simply without mascara and I think I look so bare and naked. But when it, there's a good red lip on or any color, bold lip, I feel like, ooh, actually I could wear this. So these are three beautiful cheek colors that I thought I could play with. I generally don't just wear one cheek color. Um, but I think in this moment, these two kind of make up this one a bit. I'll try this one. It has it has quite a bit of shimmer in it. This is smitten, and I think it it could be good for with a number of different uh, lip colors. But so I like a lot of cheek. If you've seen my tutorials before, I generally go for it with cheek. And placement of cheek color is so dependent upon your face shape. So I generally, you know, there are of course. Um, online guides you can look at, download, um, but I really like just experimenting on every single face because every face is going to be different, but most of the guidelines say if your face is a triangle shape, put your blush here. If your face is more round, put your blush here. But um, everybody's face moves differently when they smile and uh, versus not smiling face, and it's just, I think it's really good to do whatever physical exertion gets you flushed and then Take a picture of yourself and see where does your your most intense rosiness um, result and that's where you start your application of blush and then you feather it out in you know circles around so it could be somewhere different for each of us and that's kind of the fun thing about learning your face and as a makeup artist learning other people's faces um so often i would take whatever's on my lip and put it on my cheek you've seen me do that a million times um, but I have another vapor product that I want to put on my cheek instead. And I think this color will go so well with the cheek colors that I've already put on and this lip color. I never leave, or I shouldn't say never, I very rarely just leave a powdered cheek color as uh, alone, be alone, because the rest of my skin has a certain texture that I've created or that was just inherently there, whether it's from the moisture or the, the, the serum or the, um, the foundation that I put on, whatever. Uh, and then I put a little bit of powder on my cheeks and it usually ends up deadening down the texture, right? Uh, I don't have the glow right there anymore. So I always either mist my face with any face mist that I happen to be fond of in the moment, or I take a little emollients from my lips and put it on my cheeks. Or I take it a, a cream cheek color and I just pat it on, pat it on top. So yes, you can do cream on top of powder um, just do it gingerly. Tap it on. Um, don't streak it because it will become streaky. And remember that you can build. It's more difficult to take away, but you can absolutely build. So little little taps by little taps. And then you can go back in with your blender and just make sure that the edges are kind of seamless. And that's it. Okay. So then let's just let's just check out um, a little a little something on the eyes so that I don't look so naked. Um, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, that curling lashes is my thing. So you start at the root, right? Start at the root. No matter if you have blonde lashes like I do or jet black, lucky, lucky you, um, you want to start at the root so that you get as big of a fan heading north as possible, right? Um, and then after you've done the root and you clamp a bunch of times, and I'm sorry, I know that that can kind of poke and be annoying there and then this is pokey here, but just bear with me, the finished product is great. 
Um, and then you just want to turn your wrist ever so slightly, whichever side your nose you're, of your nose that you're on towards your nose so that you get a different angle on that um, outer corner and get that outer corner up higher. Can you see with my barely there lashes? Probably not, but you'll see when I put the mascara on what I'm talking about. Um, because the tendency for those outer lashes to go down and my lashes don't like to curl or stay curled. Um, so I put a lot of effort into that. I probably clamped down on that um, at least 20 times in each placement at the root and then when I pulled out. So can you see before I even finish coating these, how those outer ones are up and, and kind of in and uh, towards my nose. And the reason for doing that is as soon as you put mascara on, the tendency to, for the la those very fine hairs, those light lash hairs, to begin to feel weighed down or get weighed down is there and they begin to, to straighten and flatten. So that if you've over curled them, they are more likely to stick around in the shape that you want them to. So I already look more like myself. I'm coating from the root, right? All the way from the root, from the most inner of hairs, all the way up to the tips. I tend to like to come back and do another coat or two or five at the end. Let's just do this eye curl. I always forget to hold the mirror in a way that you can still see. So at the root, 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 over and over and over and over, clamp, 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 clamp. Then pull out and angle, see, angling slightly towards my nose. I can't tell you how many of you have written to me and said, that makes such a difference. I can't believe I never knew to do that. Yeah, it makes such a difference. I'm not a fan of the heated lash curler. I'm not a fan of having your lashes permed so much. Um, I think that this is very effective for most of us. Some people have the most stubborn stick straight eyelashes. And for those of you, some of you say that you have stick straight eyelashes, you get them permed and then you still use my technique because sometimes even with the perm, they need a little reminder of which way to, to curl, which way to, to turn, and that that is helpful, which makes me happy. So I feel like right now I am more than, more than done um, for my Zoom call. Everyone's been asking, what should I be putting on my face for my Zoom call? It is true that that on those um, on that platform, you'd have a tendency to look a little bit either more um, pixelated or blurred, or you know, it's not like your true glowing skin shows so much. Um, but if you want that super glowing skin look, I'm gonna do another oops, another tutorial on that. But uh, Using a balm on your face really, really does the trick. A balm and then making sure you're in good lighting. Um, normally I go back through my lashes with the comb after I paint them, but I left the comb in the other room. And I'm not ending this video to go get it, but this is the end of this video. I think that this is such a great look and super easy. You can do this in two seconds. I just took so much time because I wanted to really show you exactly my placement, how I use these and yap endlessly about my love for them. Um, also, I don't know if I showed you this. So if you if you needed a powder, this is a really nice one. Um, that's it, I think. Yeah, more soon. Bye.